about 35 miles an hour at the top speed. Okay. And it will lift the floors up. <laughs> We need to have move. the more um, <laughs> drag. It's super dead in here. Um, so I call it our quiet room within a quiet room. Welcome to the Raspit Flight Research Laboratory. They test airplanes, propellers, unmanned aircraft, and any aerospace or aviation problem you bring to them with funding. Today we are going to check out this wind shape wall used to test drones and new propeller designs and a tour of the lab. So stick with me and let's check it out together. All right, so back here in uh, Mississippi State University, Claire is going to give us uh, a tour. Uh, we've been here before and covered several different aircraft, but I want to give you all kind of like a behind the scenes tour of what's going on here at the Raspit Flight Research Laboratory. Raspit Flight <laughs> Research Laboratory. So there's a lot of security. <laughs> Which he's got, she's got the pass, she's got the, the multi pass. Multi pass. We're good. <laughs> so we're gonna get a tour with Claire right now. I've said it before and I'll say it again. One of the biggest perks of this job I do for you all is the access to all these amazing places that support aviation. All right, so when I first uh, talked to you guys on, on the phone, I was thinking this would be some like ratted out old hangar <laughs> in the back side of the airport, but no, this is like painted uh, floors like fully, this is amazing. Right, so like I said, was intentionally, or originally intended to be a manufacturing space. They never went into production in this building, but they did prototype the first Honda Jet here. So they left us with a gym. <laughs> yeah, and I see some of the things they left here with the lifts and so forth that is fully set up for a production environment. And now is just uh, a backdrop. Yes, very much so. So when you when you walk in the door here, obviously you're showcasing what this place is all about is the uh, the unmanned and the flight research here. But you've got a little bit of history sitting over here. Do you want to explain what that is over there? Yeah, we'll start with that one. So this is the world's first all composite aircraft built right here with Raspit. Um, so our team used to be in the building two buildings away from us now. Um, now that houses the Advanced Composites Institute, which is another research part of the university. But this was prototyped there for the Army in the 50s, took its maiden flight in 1965. It's designed to be a short, ta short takeoff, short landing aircraft, preferably in sandy environments. So they did flight test it. They did actually have three iterations of this aircraft. Ultimately, the Army never went into production on it, but we've got it now. So it's all composite. There's no engine in it. Currently, it is decommissioned. Hopefully, one day we'll put an engine in it and do some more research with it. But. So my, my first question was, is this amphibious? Because it looks like something would be on floats, but you're saying that was because a sandy environment, trying to keep the dust down. Correct, yes. So it's got skiffs and wheels under those skiffs. Amazing. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that's a bit of a historical piece here to have to showcase as soon as you walk in the door. What else, what else you got going on here? So up above us, we have the Windward Performance Owl. This was actually a thesis project for an aerospace graduate student at the time. He's now a faculty member in the aerospace engineering department. It's what we call an optionally piloted aircraft. So the idea is that there is a pilot in the aircraft that can take over at any time, but it's piloted from the ground. So really before the FAA would let us fly UAS in the national airspace at all, this was what you had to do. You had to have a pilot in the aircraft as well as one on the ground to do this. Awesome. And then behind you, you've got a whole fleet of trucks and trailers, <laughs> which we covered on another episode, but what, that is to support what? That is to support our UAS operations, specifically our large UAS operations. So this first trailer is strictly transport for the largest UAS in academic use and the largest UAS that flies in the national airspace right now. That's called the Taros. Um, it's got a 40 to 44 foot wingspan, depending on which configuration we've got on it. Um, next to that are our two ground control stations. The only difference between the two of those is one's eight feet longer than the other. Okay. <laughs> yeah, those are massive. It's it would show, show well going down the, the street to any, uh, any event. Exactly. <laughs> All right, and then stepping forward uh, into the, the next room, what do you got going over there? The next room is our Autonomous Systems Research Lab, but it currently houses the newest addition to RASPIT, which is our wind shape system. It is a 12 foot by 12 foot wall of fans that can, <laughs> they're staring at me now, um, 12 foot by 12 foot wall of fans that we can use to simulate different wind gust, shears, we can do um, laminar flow, all of those things. So this is in reality where you guys play racquetball, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So this is the, the wall of air, huh? Or yes. Wind so shape. Wind this shaper. is the wind shape system. Um, like I said, 12 foot by 12 foot. There are 144 modules within this. Each module has 18 fans that counter rotate. And we can isolate the fans to only blow certain sections and we can set it up to blow at different speeds, do different gusts and shears. So this is a wind tunnel without the tunnel? Correct. Okay, and you got another device off to the side you mentioned off camera that kind of helps um, with the straightening out the winds after coming yes. out of the wall? That's the flow straightener, so it helps with the laminar flow. Um, ideally, that would be on, but we were doing a photo shoot this morning that we took it off for. <laughs> that is awesome. And then what does it take to operate this? These guys over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple engineers to uh, dial in the right right program and, and get it uh, get it going. Correct. So there are 144 modules in this. Each module has 18 different fans in it that counter rotate so that the wind is easily shaped. Randy's going to get it turned on for us so that we can demonstrate. Awesome. Turn it on is very simple. You just kind of sit here, push this power button, hold it for four seconds. That keeps it on. You have pretty lights that show up all in the front showing that you have powered all the fans. Let them all synchronize for a bit. Once these lights are all finished dancing around, we can go to the actual software and play around. That's a lot of LED lights. A lot of LED lights. <laughs> all right, so Claire, are you going to be the, uh, the test subject for the wind the wall? I will be the test subject for it. Cool. All right. Well, before Claire gets all windy, let me jump in here for just a moment and share directly from Windshape's website its full capabilities because it's a very impressive and very capable tool for testing. What do you think about this topic? Let's hear about it in the comments. This is also the perfect time to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to. So on that screen, Randy's actually able to suggest or select certain modules to blow and control the speed. And then you can pin, you can kind of pinpoint where you want to be on the graph. Correct. As far as focusing yep. the wind. So that just represents all of the modules. Okay. All right. Are you ready for your Pantene moment? I'm ready. <laughs> A bit like standing in front of a jet engine. <laughs> Ready? 20%? Okay. All right. I'm ready. We can go a little higher. So Claire, I think the problem is you're too aerodynamic. I'm too aerodynamic. We need to I can't have move. a little more um, drag around your head. And I think so. <laughs> I need some um, eye protection next time. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, offering everything from state-of-the-art glass cockpit options to advanced control modules that power and control your entire aircraft. Gradia Aero Group at GradiaAero.com. Proudly representing these best in class brands for experimental general aviation. Sure Wings, BD Aviation, and MW Fly. KFA, Kit Planes for Africa, engineered for adventure and build for the bush is their motto. Offering several stole kit aircraft options like the Expedition, Safari, Bush Baby, and Explorer. Find them online at kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Visit us online at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for all things DIY aviation. And consider supporting us on our Patreon page to help us bring you more original aviation content. 
All right, so yeah, that's the most world's most expensive uh, get out of the shower and dry off uh, wall. Absolutely, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> so it'll be great for UAS research with um, how different small UAS operate in urban canyons and things like that. So that's, we're uh, looking forward to lots of research with that. That is awesome, that is awesome. All right, so uh, actual engineering stuff, you've got a lab in here, and what all do you guys do here? Correct, so we have anywhere from about 15 to 30 engineering students at a time. That's a mixture of undergraduate and graduate students. And they're all actively working on research projects alongside our research engineering team. So we've got tons of space for the students to come in and do their work every day, um, kind of their own space, but they're right next door to our research engineers so they can go tap them on the shoulder anytime they have a question or need their help. Awesome. And then seeing through this door, um, uh, we talked earlier off camera, you've got kind of a, a timeout room. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Um, so as I mentioned, this is the building where Honda prototyped the first all composite business jet. They did that all in this building, but they really thought they were going to make their own engines at first and test their own engines. Um, ultimately, they decided to go with, I think, a Pratt & Whitney maybe, but we'll show you the room that it was built for. So as we're walking closer to this, you can probably hear it on, yeah, on, on camera, on microphone here. It's, it's dead in here. <laughs> we're not even in there. No. And it's already dead. Yes. So like I said, this room was designed for Honda to test jet engines. Um, the so exhaust got, goes out there. Exhaust goes out there. It's very well insulated. They um, Ultimately, if they went that route, they didn't want to disturb the citizens of Startville testing jet engines. So they made sure this room was very dead. And then a few years ago, we had a graduate student whose thesis project was about um, acoustic testing for propellers. And so he got the money for his thesis project and built us an anechoic chamber that we still use to this day. That was awesome. Okay, as uh, she's standing in there wearing the mic, it, it really, it's, I'm gonna get quiet for a second. It's super dead in here. Um, so I call it our quiet room within a quiet room. You can't hear anything other than your own voice. That is awesome. This would be the perfect editing studio. It would. I need one of these at home. I need to get balloons to pop in here <laughs> for <laughs> tours. It, because it would go nowhere. Exactly. <laughs> that is awesome. That is roughly like a 12 by 20 room or something? Just about, yeah. We could fly probably a tiny whoop in there if we really wanted to. We don't, but we could if we needed to. All right, just continuing on our tour. Um, again, we covered this aircraft in another episode, but just to give you an, an idea of the entirety of what they do here, this is kind of the, the hangar for the unmanned stuff. Correct it. Well, manned aircraft and unmanned, but Okay. our utilized hangar space is kind of back here at the back. Gotcha. So is this more of a storage or do you, you do maintenance on them here as well? We or? do maintenance on them as well. Um, so all of our pilots are at least instrument rated and all of our maintainers are A&Ps. So we do all of our own maintenance. We do all of our own certifications and currency flights. Nice. And just a real quick kind of run through the different uh, aircraft that you've got here. Absolutely. So this is our Taros. It's the largest UAS in academic use and the largest UAS in the national airspace. We have two of those. There's another one that you'll pan to in a moment um, that's got the wings on. This one doesn't have the wings on at the moment. Um, over this way, we've got two of our Tiger Sharks. They're Navmore Applied Science Corporation Tiger Shark XP3. Um, those are Group 3 UAS. And then behind you, is our Boeing Stearman, <laughs> um, 1940s era Boeing Stearman that the lab acquired in the 50s and we've had ever since. Not flying unmanned. Not flying unmanned. Totally manned. But totally manned, but we do still fly it um, at least monthly. <laughs> um, behind that you'll see our Grumman American Tiger, which is serial number one of that line. The very first one. The very first one right here at Raspit. And capping off our manned aircraft is a Cessna L319. Um, you've probably heard of a 19 or a bird dog. This is an experimental version of the bird dog that was created for the Marine Corps. And there were 12 of these manufactured. So it is still an experimental aircraft to this day. Awesome. And you do other um, missions with this one as well. Correct. So we um, will use this a lot for a chase aircraft for our unmanned. So we can't fly some of them what's called beyond the visual line of sight. We have to have eyes on them at all times. So this is perfect for that. It's got a very low stall speed. It stalls out about 50 knots. So we don't have to do figure eights behind the unmanned. Uh, but we also use it for a number of different applications, test radios, test EOIR, that kind of thing. Amazing. 
And then last but not least, you got the, I, I'm calling it the playroom. <laughs> yeah. What goes on in your, uh, your last room over here? So this is our flight operations area. Um, it's where all of my pilots and maintainers desks are and where we house all of our other fun aircraft. And this is pretty much kind of uh, at scale where you guys started back in the day, yes? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a little bit of everything in here. Um, lot, most of our pilots, all of our pilots started out as RC hobbyists. So we've got lots of things that are personal for them um, that they'll fly during breaks and things, but also lots of aircraft that we can keep them up to date and current with. All right, Claire. Well, thanks for the, the quick tour through the university at the uh, airport. If somebody was interested in this area of science uh, with Mississippi State, how do they go about either becoming a student or maybe even bringing some type of grant funded project to you all that you all can solve problems? Absolutely. We would love any grant funded project you want to bring our way. The easiest way to get in touch with the RASPIT team is to visit our website. That's www.raspit.msstate.edu. Thank you for joining me today and learning more about aviation here at Mississippi State. Consider joining us and supporting us in our Patreon community. Shout out to Zach Newsom, Mike Babcock, Lynn Gardner, Gary Martin, and our Patreon team. Remember to like this episode and subscribe for more. Join us for the next episode coming soon.